We got a special one for you guys. This video is a collaborative effort. You know, I really suck at giving you insightful information and decent backstory about the games I play. I just give y'all a brief summary and then blindly poke fun at the game in an attempt to make you mildly chuckle. So I got someone with me today. He's a true working man, a guy with a small but dedicated following who makes game reviews because he likes doing it. And he crosses his arms too. We're gonna both cross our arms. We'll double cross. Today's game is the first Medal of Honor games on the PS1, the games that started the whole military shooter bullcrap. And to help me today is my friend, Slayer Coon. Hey Stu, Slayer Coon here. I'm happy to join in on discussing the PS1 Medal of Honor games because I have a history with these games being a PS1 gamer myself. Nowadays we are seeing an influx of kids waxing nostalgic about the likes of Black Ops 2 and MW3, games I remember being absolutely despised on the internet 10 years ago. But me? My introduction to shooters was with the first two Medal of Honor games on the OG PlayStation. And talk about a great introduction! My first FPS was also Medal of Honor, Medal of Honor Frontline on the PS2. For the longest time it was the only FPS I had because I was a console gamer. I had heard of Doom and Duke Nukem, but I'd never seen them before. But I did play GoldenEye with my cousin. Granted, I could barely get past the first level as a kid, and most of my time was spent on the multiplayer component, which I played a lot of with my older brother. But as the years have gone on and I got good, the first two Medal of Honor games have grown on me to become some of my favorite shooters of all time. Well, at least you got good. I got worse at games as I got older. But let's not waste any more time with nostalgia and see if these games are still worth playing today. All right, I tell you what, I'll fire it up and run through it and you just tell us how wonderful it is. Oh man, look at these PS1 graphics. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Hey, wait a minute. Where's the damn crosshair? How do you expect me to aim without a crosshair? Oh, you have like an aiming mode where you get a crosshair. Oh, that's just great. You mean I just can't aim on the fly? That's wonderful. The late 90s was a transitionary phase when it comes to first person shooters. The dooms and quakes of the world won over many a gamer's heart, but with 3D technology getting more and more advanced by the year, things are starting to become a bit more grounded in reality. I'll tell you what's grounded in reality, the fact you need a freaking crosshair. But you know what? You know what? I'm willing to put that aside. I don't need no crosshair. Did my grandpappy have a crosshair when he was digging shrapnel out of his teeth in Korea? No, but if he sat down and played this game, first thing he'd say is, where's the fucking crosshair? Huh? The development of Medal of Honor is very interesting, as Steven fucking Spielberg can largely be thanked for it coming to fruition after a meeting he had with DreamWorks Interactive staff members. Inspired by both his son's love for Goldeneye and his own interest in World War II, the seeds for the World War II shooter genre were actually planted by this famed director. Earlier in development, there was actually going to be hefty loads of gore, but after the tragic Columbine massacre, blood was cut entirely. That's why they don't bleed? They're Nazis! They're not people! Let them bleed! Or do like some games did and make the blood green. Zombie Nazis! From outer fucking space! I would have bought this game if that was the name of it. Sadly, T-rated violence would just be the norm for many World War II shooters up until Call of Duty World at War, which came out during the twilight of the World War II shooter's reign. But alas, we'll have to take what we're given. And what we are given is still top notch. I've got a question. Guys, how many of you are wearing headphones right now? The audience is now dead. Seriously though, I'm kind of impressed so far with what I'm seeing. This really is straight up a true 3D FPS on the PS1, not that fake 3D shit like Doom does. Although the draw distance does leave a little bit to be desired, but what do you expect? It's a miracle this runs at all. Ah, I really miss my crosshair. Ah! Wait a minute, it didn't go ping. Why didn't it go ping? I mean, what Grant's supposed to go ping when you run out of ammo? Fucking pingless wonder. Upon starting the game, we are greeted to one of the most creative menus in all of gaming. It's not just your standard list of options, but a fully rendered interactive menu with character models that actually move around and do things. And different parts of the environment correspond with the various menu prompts. I really wish more game menus would take a cue from this. We play as Lieutenant Jimmy Patterson, fighting during the last days of World War II, and our ventures will see us bravely take on Nazi scum in various situations, ranging from the balls-out guns a-blazing 
to the sneaky undercover stealth oriented stuff. I gotta give this game credit for giving you a host of different control schemes to use, including the classic twin stick strafing look controls most console FPSs use now, because a lot of early FPS controls suck ass. Every console FPS dev had it in their mind that players would want to move and turn with one stick. That is called tank controls and is frowned upon in most societies and illegal in three countries. The gunplay is very cathartic, with shots to various body parts resulting in different animations playing out. Before the advent of ragdoll physics, this was some of the best pain and death animation around. I'll say, you're never actually sure if the guy you just shot is dead or not. He'll get knocked to the ground, but get back up and shoot your ass as you're walking away from him. So you gotta shoot him like a few times more just to make sure he stays dead. Like, look at this guy. I knocked him down and he still takes like three or four more hits to kill. And then there's the dogs. Hi, doggy. How is your sex life? Talking about the pain and death animations, let me show you something I like to call the Medal of Honor dance. Yeah, get down with your bad self. Go Nazi. Go Nazi. And despite being 20 years old, it also features some of the most convincing gun sounds of any shooter I've ever played. Of course, you sadly can't pick up and replace your weapon like in later shooters, something even as a little kid disappointed me. But every weapon in this game is great. No filler weapons just for the sake of having a hundred guns. It's all killer and no filler. Um, Exhibit A, the grenades. They have no throwing range at all. My grandmother throws further than this. I always have to aim the camera up a little extra to get any range out of it. Or else it just falls at my feet. Fucking boomerang grenade. And the sniper rifle. Oh, let me talk about this sniper rifle. It automatically zooms and you can't adjust the zoom at all. Every time you aim, it has to zoom in first. I would rather it just already be zoomed in if it's not going to be variable. And it still takes like two or three hits to kill the Nazi. Don't sniper rifles have big 30 caliber rounds? You would think just one shot would be enough. And the sniper rifle's bullshit anyway because of the draw distance. You can't even see all that far. You have to have the enemy close enough to just shoot him with your regular rifle before you can shoot him. What, what the fuck? I shot an invisible wall? Oh yeah, the invisible barriers and collision detection is just hilarious in this game. That being said, the gameplay can be a bit tough and even unfair at times. Some levels have enemies that grenade spam you or even shoot you, a lone gunman, with a rocket launcher. Oh, I encountered that all right. Them some bitches will one hit kill you too. I'm so used to TF2 where it takes a couple of rockets to take somebody down. If the Nazis throw a rocket at you, you're Jesus's problem now. Now I'm no military expert, but I'm pretty certain rocket launchers are mainly used against vehicles, not used to take out a single enemy. Slayer, this is war, a world war. If you have the tools at hand, by any means necessary becomes a really good quote. Plus it feels good. And there are also other times when my crosshairs will be dead center on an enemy, but will keep missing them. Oh well, it's the first in a series, so faults like this are to be expected. I might have an explanation for this. I'm gonna try to aim this MP40, watch this. From the looks of it, they tried to program some kind of dynamic accuracy and recoil. So the guns are supposed to be inaccurate. That's a touch of realism I could do without, honestly. When it comes to the levels, they just nailed the atmosphere in each one. Granted, every single level takes place at night for whatever reason, and the visuals in general are pretty damn dark. But god does this game have an atmosphere. Whether you're walking through the streets of a French city, crawling through trenches, or trekking a snowed out ravine, every single level, regardless of difficulty, is a sight to behold even with the blocky PS1 graphics. My graphics look like they were drawn by a four-year-old with the talents of Pablo Picasso in his prime. And every level comes with a unique set of objectives to complete, much like in Goldeneye. 
So Medal of Honor overcomes being just a mere shooting gallery. I'm gonna be completely honest. I probably would have liked the game better if it was that. I have a bone to pick about the objectives. You see, the way the game and the levels work, it's completely possible for you to go from start to finish without completing any of your objectives. And if you don't complete them all, you fail the mission, even though you got to the exit. What's bad about this is you can just blow through the whole level and run right past one or two objectives. Normally, it's ones where you have to pick up a certain item or activate something in the level. And then when you get to the exit, it tells you objectives not met. And then you have to start backtracking in an empty level with no enemies because you killed them all and try your damnedest to find that thing you walked right past. This happened so many times. Even when I did everything short of wall hugging to try to find the objectives. All the while, the orchestra music is blaring at me like serious shit is going on, and I'm over here doing a fucking scavenger hunt. This really killed the game for me sometimes. You know, people make fun of modern military shooters because they have compasses and arrows that are like, hey, go here, dumbass. And it goes way too far with that sometimes. But it's because before then, we had games like this where you could just run right past your objective. They were just like, hey, you figure it out. And yes, I know. There's a compass right there. Guess what it does? It's a compass. It just points north, not to your objective, it's for decoration. I think they fixed that in the later games, but in this one, you're left to your own devices to try to figure this shit out. And every level is complemented by a mission briefing featuring actual World War II footage. The Nazis poured countless man hours and watch marks into their various secret weapons programs, especially in the area of jet propulsion. Here, the airframe of a Messerschmitt 163 undergoes a somewhat successful test. A mess of Messerschmitts! <laughs> that was me, I'm sorry. This reminds me of what the History Channel used to do. You know, back when they didn't suck alien cock. Sadly, if there's one big negative that I do have with this game, it's that it's very short. This is a problem even shooters 10 years later would suffer with their campaigns, but Medal of Honor is easily beaten within three hours or even less of your experience. Took me five hours, but I suck. Not alien cock, though. Granted, there is also a multiplayer component as well. Not on the same level as Goldeneye, but still fun. You can even unlock some bonkers characters. And whenever you press the action button over a player's dead corpse, this happens. <laughs> I have no idea why that silly laugh is in here, but it's one of the best things ever. Yeah, I tried to play the multiplayer. It's a shame you can't play against the AI. Multi-tap would have been nice too. I mean, damn, Sarge's Heroes had four-player deathmatch. Sarge's Heroes had something that Medal of Honor does not. But to be fair, it was like 10 FPS. But I've talked about Army Man enough for a lifetime, fuck it. Medal of Honor is an all-time classic of the OG PlayStation era. And it kind of surprises me people don't discuss it more often when talking about the original PlayStation. Sure, it's no Half-Life, but when it comes to FPS games on the PS1 at least, there's nothing better. Or is there? I want to throw my hat in the ring and say there's some pretty good FPSs on the PS1. Alien Trilogy, Alien Resurrection, Power Slave, which is actually getting the Night Dive Studios treatment, and Codename Tenka. Are they better than Medal of Honor? Th that's subjective. You'll have to make up your own mind about that. Sometimes this game is funny. Like, sometimes there'll be a locked door and the soldiers are behind it and they're trying to run through the door. They even try to shoot through it. I did it, Ja, das ist eine Schittenpuken. This game's AI is Scheiße. And then there's the level that has a bunch of Nazi scientists. Wait a minute, I have to look something up. Half-Life German scientist voice clips. There is a god! So like, ah! Oh, nein! Stop! Oh, meine Güte. Nein! I love the shotgun in this game. If you aim it just right, it's a one-shot kill. Hello. Die. Some of these enemies have this death animation where as they're dying, they'll shoot their gun. And you can't do nothing to them while they're doing that, so you need to just get out of their way. Near the end of the game, you have to destroy a bunch of prototype planes or something, and those very last levels will rip your ass a new one. The game stops playing around and throws every Nazi it has on your butt. Oh, for fuck's sake, the invisible wall strikes again. You know what, game? If you're gonna play that shit with me, I'm gonna do cheat codes.
<sighs> You'd think you'd run out of ammo by now. Headphone check. Just wanted to make sure you were still awake. Here it is, the final battle. A seemingly unlimited supply of Nazis. Gotta shoot through these crates and get to the end of the game. Oh, uh, what? So apparently if you put that game shark code in, it makes these crates invincible. It's like a damn anti-cheat measure. You gotta do it the right way. I'm amazed that they thought of that. So I get to the rocket, I launch the rocket, rocket comes back down and blows the whole shit up. Headphone check. I win, and now this review is over. Ain't that right, Slayer? One year later in 2000, when the PS1 was entering its dying days, we were graced with Medal of Honor Underground. There's another one! Oh, I was ready to be done with this video. Basically a souped up expansion pack for the original Medal of Honor, but this time centered around the French Resistance. There are so many World War II shooters where you play as the US Marines or the Red Army, Occasionally, you might get to play as the Brits here and there, but the many civilian activists rebelling against Nazi tyranny is even now largely looked over in World War II shooters. So seeing the second outing in the Medal of Honor series starring the French Resistance is a very welcome addition to the series. I'll tell you what's a welcome addition. They gave you a crosshair. Praise John Halo and Charlie's Angels. Is it me or is it not in the center? I got an idea. I'll get an alignment grid. Yep, it's not in the center. Why? You're going to give us a crosshair and then not center it? Now I'm curious. Is it centered in front line? Uh, oh. Uh. <whistles> yes, it is. Perfectly centered. This time you play as Manon Baptiste, a French resistance fighter and a female character in an early 2000s World War II shooter. How that would land today given the current state of YouTube clickbaiters is something that I won't discuss, but needless to say, just the feeling of starting off as a civilian rebel kicking Nazi ass to eventually getting recruited by the OSS is an amazing story for a World War II shooter. My take on Underground is I really couldn't tell you if it was any better or worse than the other game. It's got a crosshair, so I like it more just because of that. But really, expansion is a good word for it. This would have been DLC if it was on the PC, because it's just the same game with different maps. But I do think there was a big variety in the maps. Tell them about the maps. This game takes place before the previous game, roughly around 1942 to 1944, when the previous game started, so it's basically a prequel of sorts as well. And the story will see you in some very interesting settings, some of which are rarely seen in World War II shooters, like the Northern African Theater or the Greek island of Crete. Still, many of the settings are reminiscent of those from the previous outing, such as the blue-tinted streets of Paris or a foggy woodland. And the graphics are slightly better too, but still very dark. At least we get a couple of times where the game is set at day. I don't know why the previous game couldn't do that. The one map where I was like, what? Was the one where you're running around in these ancient ruins. Like, when did this happen in World War II? This is serious Sam shit. I mean, is this supposed to be an Indiana Jones joke? Nazis in ancient ruins? What's going on? By the way, the Medal of Honor dances in this one too. A downside is that the game tends to lag at times, which really shows how far Underground pushed the system's limits. Yeah, I had slowdowns on and off while I was playing too, but unlike poor Slayer here, which is playing it on a real PS2, I can do something about it. Duck Station has a wonderful little setting where you can overclock the CPU. Sometimes this breaks games, sometimes it makes them run better. Like Driver 2 runs like ass. On a real PS1, it would drop down to 15 FPS. Not joking. Overclock that CPU, now we get a perfectly steady cap 30. And you don't have to stop there. How about 16x9 widescreen hack? 1080 textures get rid of the jaggies and the texture warble boom look at that that is the power of duck station epsxe you can fucking suck it let's see what it does for medal of honor underground so here's the native settings this is 100 percent accurate to a ps1 and boom what a big difference if you want to know what a pc port would look like here you go now somebody needs to make a mouse and keyboard mod for this game and this is basically a remastered edition this applies to both games and even the majority of the series, but Medal of Honor and its underground expansion are complemented by an orchestral score courtesy of Michael Gacchino, and I really hope I'm pronouncing that name properly, who has a very large list of works he's composed for. 
Granted, I spent most of my time playing these games listening to Judas Priest, because screw you, World War II set to heavy metal is awesome. Historical accuracy be damned. Look, if you want heavy metal to listen to while you're looking at World War II footage, go listen to Tank. Literally all their songs are about war. The times that we do get metal in games, it's normally that Mick Gordon shit that's always like boom, ba doom, 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 ba my cats are at my door wondering if I'm okay. Otherwise, yeah, I am not into orchestral music. In fact, I think it's so overused in video games. Yo, we need to go back to tracker music. Because I'm getting tired of this damn boom, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum. Okay, the joke isn't funny anymore. But the scores in both of these games are pretty damn good considering the utter mediocrity that is most orchestral scores. <laughs> When it comes to gameplay, it's more of the same really, but a bit more refined. I'm glad to report that the grenade spam is heavily toned down. Ditto for the hilariously stupid sight of enemies shooting at a lone gunman with a rocket launcher. You do talk like this doesn't happen in TF2 every day. Instead, you'll be blowing up tanks or taking a ride on a sidecar, turning Nazis into bloodstained Swiss cheese. Oh wait, I forgot, there's no blood in this game. And if you put in a cheat code, you even get a hilarious secret campaign where you'll fight off dogs and tanks and fucking aliens. Or are those Nazi zombies? Yes, and that's why this game is superior to the first one. It actually does have zombie Nazis from outer fucking space. Not only that, there's guys in suits of armor, zombie Nazis on a motorcycle, and a mansion that has dancing Nazi dogs with rocket launchers. Just, just watch. Watch and be amazed. <laughs> I mean, there's even a dog that drives a half-track. What more do you want? Playing this with cheats makes it even better. There's one cheat that makes the bullets fly everywhere when they hit the walls, and there's also one that makes the enemies fight each other. <laughs> it looks like something out of Monty Python. They're the knights who say nine. Yes, I'm five years old. There's also another cheat that makes you fire four times as fast, so now my 1911 pistol is a Glock 18. Due to the high price of ammo, after I kill you, I'm going to pull the bullets back out of you. Now, what is the goal of the secret mission in Medal of Honor Underground? To build a robotic Nazi killing machine named Panzerknacker. Ich bin der Panzerknacker. Or in English, the Tank Cracker. And in the final mission, you and Panzerknacker have to get out of the mansion. And if you escape with Panzerknacker, raise your hands in the air and say, Kann ich jetzt aufhören, dieses Spiel zu rezensieren? Medal of Honor Underground could have just been a mere expansion to the original, but it surpasses being just that. With better gameplay, great new weapons, and some of the best levels I've ever played in a World War II shooter. What's not to love? Medal of Honor Underground is an overlooked gem of the PS1 era, and the World War II genre. And fun fact, this was actually the first FPS game I ever played. Talk about a great introduction. I can still remember the first time I ever played a Call of Duty game, and me saying, wow, this reminds me of Medal of Honor. That's the moment you know you have hipster cred. I still remember when Medal of Honor Frontline was the only military shooter I had ever heard of. When you're young and ain't got no internet, you have no way of knowing what's out there. And I remember getting super hyped to play Medal of Honor Rising Sun and European Assault. Thanks to seeing them in Electronic Gaming Monthly. God, I miss game magazines. But I never played another Medal of Honor game after Frontline. Well, I take that back. I played that one, but it was hot garbage. But it did come with an HD remaster of Frontline. Line, and that was awesome. I need to stop talking about Frontline, that's not what we're reviewing. But nostalgic bias aside, 
Underground is still one of the most unique and creative World War II shooters out there, a game that did a lot of things many later World War II shooters didn't have the creativity or passion to do. In short, I can't recommend it enough. The Medal of Honor series would eventually become a nine-annual series up until the modern military shooter came into the mainstream zeitgeist circa 2007. A few years later, during the early 2010s, the Medal of Honor series would briefly be revived as yet another modern military shooter game to add to the stinky pile. But thankfully, this dookie duology wasn't well received by most gamers. And in 2020, we'd actually get a Medal of Honor virtual reality game. I saw that on my quest too. I threatened to get it, but it was like $40 or some shit. Although I've heard it got mixed reviews as well. So yeah, Medal of Honor as a series didn't last long before fading into irrelevancy. Because believe it or not, the World War II shooter genre during the first half of the 2000s was milked for all it's worth in the same vein as modern military shooters or battle royale games. Yeah, they all kind of sporadically popped out of nowhere. We got some new Wolfenstein games, Commandos, Commandos, Dead the Commandos, Brothers in Arms, Day of Defeat, Battlefield 1942, The First Call of Duty, and a bunch of them that never got popular. Like who remembers the Pearl Harbor series of games? I barely do. But in spite of that, the first couple of Medal of Honor games are all-time classics that no shooter fan should miss out on. Supremely recommended. This game was horse shit. Nah, that ain't fair, that ain't fair. They were good, they were good. You know, I probably would have liked the games better if I would have grown up with them the way Slayer did. You know, I keep talking about Frontline because that's the one that I grew up with. I did like them in short bursts, because I had to sit down and play through the whole thing all in one go. I feel it's one of those games that you play a little bit, take a break from it, come back, play it a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. And I was really getting aggravated with not being able to find the objectives and also the parts where the game started to get a little bit difficult. Now, I don't think these games are bad. In fact, I do think they're good. I just didn't connect with them. When I play old FPS games like Quake or Blood or Doom, even though I didn't have them as a kid, I still feel like I can enjoy them and feel like they still hold up. To me, unfortunately, the first Medal of Honor games feel like they were much better games when they came out. And I'm even gonna throw Frontline, my own favorite in that category, because I went back and played it too, and it just didn't have the same impact on me it did way back then. Because now I've played other FPS games that are so much better in my eyes. But I can still respect these games. I love the PS1 graphics, the sound design, and the story is all very good. And I would still play this over any of that Call of Duty or Battlefield junk that's out nowadays. It's a 3 out of 5 to me for Medal of Honor. 3.5 for Underground because Crosshair and more level variety. And with that said, it's time to wrap up this video. I would like to thank my guest Slayer Coon for giving me the idea for this episode. Y'all watch his channel, he makes good shit. He's got reviews on the first GTA games and the Gran Turismo games. It's all real good stuff. Huge thanks for having me on, Stu. As for me, I happen to make a plethora of game reviews as well, mainly focused on 90s and 2000s titles. And occasionally I'll even discuss rock and metal music as well. So feel free to subscribe to my channel if that sounds up your alley. Alright boys, you know what to do. Get on that Patreon. Five dollars gets you videos before anybody else sees them and get your name on the board. And a Discord. You can also get your name on the board just for one dollar. Subbing is nice too. And I don't mean that in a sexual way. Unless you're into that. I don't judge. Just, just subscribe to the channel.